Town Corner fans. I have officially the news coming out of Syria at this time. The battle for Aleppo seems to be over. And it does appear that Bashar al-Assad's forces have won. According to the Independent, the battle for the Syrian city of Aleppo has reportedly ended after rebels withdrew from six remaining districts in the opposition held east of the city. Rami Abdel Rahman, head of the UK-based Monitor, the, Syri the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, said it is just a matter of a small period of time until it is a total collapse. The Syrian military have claimed to take, have taken control of 98% of rebel held East Aleppo early on Monday morning after seizing the large industrial district of Sheikh Saeed. The rebels don't have much time. They either have to surrender or die, Lieutenant General Z Zed Al Saleh, head of the government's Aleppo Security Committee, told reporters. Rebel fighters are now confined to tiny pockets in the southeast of the city after withdrawing from the east side of the Aleppo River. The situation is extremely difficult today, said Zagaria Malafifi, probably butchered that, of the Fostakim rebel group. Several last-minute UN, U.S., and Russian-backed attempts to broker a humanitarian ceasefire in the decimated city failed. Approximately 8,000 rebels, among them Al-Qaeda-affiliated fighters and 250 civilian, thousand civilians in the area, have been cut off from reinforcements, from aid, and from food supplies since August. An intense Russian-backed bombing campaign that began in September killed hundreds of people and destroyed medical infrastructure and brought residents in the rebel enclave to their knees. Thousands of people have fled the siege bar barricades since the aerial attack intensified two weeks ago, and approximately 10,000 people are thought to have, have gone to the regime or on Kurdish-held territory. Now, essentially what all of this is talking about is that... Uh, Pretty much, uh, President Assad is now close to retaking the city, and essentially this could really mean the end of the long-standing six-year civil war that has been going on in Syria. Now, as you re may recall, the so-called rebels of Syria, which were U.S.-backed, and most of them al Nusra Front, Al-Qaeda, and even the spawning of some of the ISIS fighters, were essentially the people fighting to essentially overthrow the Assad regime, to essentially have their own so-called rebel spring, or um, Arab Spring. You know, they, they were trying to give some people this false narrative that they were somehow going to be like, you know, uh, the Egyptian Revolution, or the Tunisian one, or even to a lesser and more failed extent, Libya. In fact, I think Libya would have been a more accurate scenario of what would have happened. But ultimately, the rebels have failed. And now, it does appear that President Assad will stay in power, at least for the time being. Now, I've said in the past that, do, that I do not necessarily support the Assad regime. He is no, by no means a socialist. He is by no means any sort of communist, Marxist, or anything of the sort. The man, quite frankly, if anything, is a syncretic despot. But if anything else, he is the best choice to currently stay and govern Syria. If we end by looking at the real analysis, if the rebels had one, if the rebels had any sake, any organization, any real way of overthrowing him, it would be a power vacuum that we saw just like Libya. It would be, Syria would become a failed state, and currently with the state of affairs going on in that region, not exactly a gamble you want to be throwing the dice on. Essentially, you've got al Nusra Front, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and it would just basically be infighting between terrorist groups. So essentially, Syria would become an anarchic, you know, fail. It would be a failed state. It would essentially become pretty much a anarcho-terrorist state, and that's not what Syria needs. Again, though, does that say that Assad is the best choice? No. It's basically like saying was Saddam the best choice for Iraq? No. 
but frankly, Saddam should have been left, you know, left alone because the in, in, in the resulting the resulting shit that came after that was essentially the fact that there was a power vacuum that was created in Iraq, and well, look where it is now. Better off, a little better off than Syria, but it's still not any. It's still pretty shitty. And essentially, it would have been a lot shittier in Syria. And the fact that ISIS is basically controlling, trying to control quite a lot of the country right now, that says a lot. Now, while the Syrian civil war itself, the battle with the rebels of Syria, may essentially be over, it does not take away from the fact that Syria still has to contend with the threats of ISIS and certain terrorist groups. But for right now, this U.S.-backed coalition seems to be basically at its end, at its knees. It, it's little 15 minutes of fame that drug on too long is over. So, not offering any congratulations, not really saying any sort of method of support, but I do have to say that I am glad that at least this phase of fighting is over. And now, Mr. Assad must contend with more trivial matters that should have been dealt with a long time ago. It is also important to note that this same group of people that the U.S. is basically supporting is the same group that basically has spawned a lot of these, you know, fractured groups like Al Nursa Front and ISIS. The U.S. has repeatedly said on numerous occasions that it is fighting this war on terrorism, that it is fighting against ISIS and Al Nursa Front and Al Qaeda. But by essentially supporting the rebels, you are essentially supporting the terrorists. You are essentially supporting the you're supporting ISIS indirectly, but you're supporting ISIS. The fact that the US gave guns and weaponry to the rebels, not knowing who it was gonna fall into, because let's be honest, the US has this policy of basically, you know, at, you know, acting first and asking questions later. It does that on a lot of occasions. The point is, is that it was giving weaponry to the rebels, not knowing who it was going to, and then they're shocked that, you know, ISIS now is armed and, can, you know, is, you know, continuing to remain resistant. Of course they're going to be resistant. They have U.S. weaponry. And of course they can't defeat the terrorists in Iraq and Afghanistan because they gave them that weaponry. You know, now we can't completely blame the U.S. for their stupidity. I mean, let's be honest. The U.S. doesn't know what the fuck it's doing half the time when it does this. But, you know, they've made their bed. They're going to have to sleep in it. And now it basically comes down to the whole point. What are they going to do now? Now that they're, they're, they're basic, <laughs> their coalition that they basically supported, their, their puppet, their, their little puppets that they tried to have take over Syria has failed, now what are they going to do? So it really leads into that question on what happens next. Now, Russia is obviously bombing the shit out of ISIS and doing a hell of a good job. And Russia also backs the Assad regime. It is with that that I really see that any coalition in the in the future, particularly with Donald Trump becoming president of the United States, I don't really think that we should look. We should really see the U.S. probably getting in any sort of involvement in Syria in the near future. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this whole thing with Syria just kind of fades away. Not saying that this whole idea that they're going to fight ISIS is ever going to go away, because let's be honest, everyone hates those idiots. That should be a global consensus. But ultimately, I think a lot of people, I think this whole idea of Syria is going to dissipate because with Trump's very cozy relations to Russia, 
and his and Russia's backing of the Assad regime, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if somehow there's not some turning point in the, in at least the United States policy. Only time will tell. But as but again, for this moment, it looks like Assad's seat in power remains unchanged and probably will be for some time. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Assad wins, bitches. Viva Syria. Peace.